I don't know what to say. What about if they think I'm weird? Hi. Maybe I should just hide and go to the bathroom or something. I'm just gonna avoid this situation. What is up YouTube? Today in this video, I'm super excited to be sharing some more content with you all. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing how you can avoid being awkward at professional networking events and some of the things that you can be doing to take your networking skills up a notch. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you stay tuned for the entire video. Hope you got your phone ready. I hope you're ready to grow. So let's go ahead and get into it. So welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, what's up? My name is James Huntley. Before I get started with any of my content, I have to do one special thing. So come here, come here. Gotta show y'all some love. Give me a hug. Ah, doesn't that feel so much better? Feels like we broke the ice. Feels like now you're a part of the Get Right family. Or on this channel, I go over professional development, financial literacy, motivational content, and just things that will help you grow as an individual. So if this sounds like something that you want to be a part of, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so that each and every single time that I post, you are aware, you know, when I post, where I post, and you can grow each and every single day. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to avoid being awkward is to do your homework before you attend these networking events, right? When I say do your homework, I mean, research some of the companies that will be attending these events, research some of the businesses and business owners that will be attending these events. And you can find this information if you Google, you know, the different companies um, that you're interested in. You can also get on LinkedIn and there's a ton of owners, presidents, vice presidents of companies that you can just literally search. You can see some of their background and also see um, just some things that you may be familiar with um, and can be some touching and talking points uh, for you once you get to that event. So you're gonna wanna make sure you do this. And let me tell you this. So I am a, a civil engineer. Um, I don't wanna talk too much about me, but when I attended networking events, I saw that this strategy really, really helped. First of all, it lets these businesses, these companies, know that you are really interested in working with them or at least conversating with them. You have something to talk with them about. Second, it impresses them because most people are not gonna do this. Most people just show up to events and try to figure things out. And when you're just beginning, it's super important for you to be able to know what you want, know some of the opportunities, or at least uh, be able to talk about some of the things uh, that these companies are doing, or um, at least be able to have an idea of some of the things that they're doing so that conversations can be made. When I was able to talk with the companies and talk about some of the things that they were doing, they were really impressed and it kind of gave them a, an idea of, this is a person who's, you know, first of all, make sure they do their research and um, they seem interested in working with us. So we may need to uh, develop some interest in them so that we have a valuable employee. So doing your homework is super, super important. When you get to these networking events, that communication is very important. And if you have not done homework, then you better be a really good communicator and have a really good idea of the industry uh, that you are in because you are now set back and you don't know what are some of the things that these companies are doing, uh, who are some of the people that are part of these companies. So it's like you're taking, you're already one step uh, back. So if you have great communication skills, maybe you can wing it, um, but I wouldn't advise it if you are um, a beginner as well as you know that you get awkward in certain settings. And I know for me, I can be very awkward at times. Um, it's something that I'm working myself out of uh, because I'm trying to build my communication skills, but it is challenging, you know, speaking and speaking to multiple people that you really don't know anything about. And listen, if your networking skills aren't really where you want them to be and you really want to improve your networking skills, um, I have made a video 
about some of the ways that you can do that, how you can build your communication skills and things like that. So I'm gonna leave that in the card section up above. The second way to avoid being awkward at some of these professional networking events is to find a connection. When I say find a connection, it means literally find something that another individual has in common. And so this is something that I kind of took away from one of my mentors, named Amaya, uh, at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. It's super important to be able to get that connection with somebody. It can be as something as simple as food, right? Let's say at a net, most of, most of the time at networking events, you're going to uh, be around, you know, professionals, um, business um, individuals, and food is going to be in the area. So. You know, maybe it's just something as simple as they're doing like a, a cookout and the person that you're talking with, they got a hot dog on their plate and you decided to get a hot dog on your plate. Well now, guess what? Both of you guys have hot dogs. So that is a connection, right? They pick something, you have the same thing, and now you guys can connect just off of that simple thing. It can be so many different things that you can find to connect with people. But once you see it, exploit it because it opens up communication and it relaxes you and allows you to feel like you have something to talk about. The worst thing about professional networking events for me was feeling like I wasn't able to talk about certain things or I wasn't really you know, competent of certain things. Like I just felt like, well, for engineering, my field was super, super technical and everyone was so high level. Um, but when I began to find connections with people, um, as simple as food or any connection, I found that people were very similar, right? We're all simple minded. We all enjoy nice things. We all enjoy good energy. We all enjoy laughing. We all enjoy just a various amount of things so you just have to be able to find that connection so it opens up uh, the ability for you to communicate so that the networking event that you're at is not so awkward the third thing you can do to avoid being awkward at these professional networking events is to ask open-ended questions these are questions that someone else can answer and they can answer in detail Asking an open-ended question mean, means that they are not able to just say yes or no. Like if you just ask a person, you know, do you like food? Do you like certain things? All they can say is yes or no. These are not open-ended questions. You want to ask questions um, that really make the person talk about um, something that they enjoy, talk about something in detail, so it gives you a few different ways to go. And I know, for me, it was super important to be able to have conversation. So, if I asked them about, you know, what are some of the things that the company does and what are some of the things that the company is planning to do, well, these are open-ended questions but that kind of means I haven't done my research. So you wanna find questions, first of all, that are open-ended. And if you haven't done your research, these are questions that are okay to ask. Um, it's gonna at least get them talking, but if you ask questions that really exploit the person, the, the actual person that you're building a connection with, it forces them to talk and it tells you uh, more about them and it allows you to have a solid response. So an example of that would be, what is one thing that you wish you would have known uh, when you were certain age? That right there is something that if that individual is older that you're networking with, they have some wisdom or they have some information that is personal, like that is super personal and it is involved, it's gonna probably be involved with the industry. So let's say as an engineer, I have, um, you know, I'm networking with a project manager. That just means they make more than me, they've had more experience, um, 
in engineering than me. So I asked the project manager, you know, um, what things would you have wished you would have known when you were my age? And some of the things they could respond back with is, well, at your age, I was playing around or I was not as focused as I am now or I didn't ask as many questions or any of those things. And you know what that is allows me to do is to have a response. Like, okay, well, right now I don't play too much, but that is good to know. It could breed, you know, conversation for a bunch of different things. So you want to make sure that you're asking open-ended questions uh, that really they are personal and person specific. It makes people really talk about themselves. People love to talk about themselves. So um, it's going to breed some conversation for sure. The fourth thing to do to avoid being awkward at professional networking events or just in the workplace in general is to stop having forced conversation. Everything does not have to be forced. Go with the flow. Um, this takes time as you're building your communication skills and you're paying attention to body language, which is something that I go over in another video. If you're able to do some of these things, you'll know how people feel. Um, their body's gonna tell you. Um, if something happens, you react to it. You don't always have to force um, something to take place. It's not um, you controlling everything. Let things play out the way they're supposed to. And once you have uh, listened, taken in, uh, and observed different things, then you can react um, and go with the flow. And it's really hard to explain, you know, on camera, but I would advise you going to multiple networking events, multiple, and practicing each and every single day. You get better with practice. So, I know it's all up to you. As long as you are practicing good communication, as long as you are um, not forcing things, as long as you are uh, listening, observing, um, doing your research uh, before you get to the event, um, and you're building connection and, and trying to find ways to connect, then you're going to be just fine when you're a professional networking. I also have some educational resources that I'm going to leave in the description um, box below. It just goes over some more ways um, that you can avoid being awkward uh, when you're at professional networking events. Um, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and to hit that subscription button if you missed it um, all the way throughout the video. My goal is to have roughly 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. That means I'm able to impact 1,000 people. So this is super important for me and yes, your one subscription does really, really matter. So. I appreciate you guys for watching this video. I hope you found some value in it. Um, feel free to hit me up on any of my social media platforms at J underscore get right, where I will make sure that I answer your questions, comments, concerns, whatever it may be when it comes to financial literacy, networking, negotiation, motivation. It's a ton of different um, things that I am willing to help mentor you through. So. Like I said, I, I really appreciate you guys for watching this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace. Ask yourself, are you really where you want to be?